Let's look at everything new on the lock screen and home screen in iOS 16, including how to customize your lock screen. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss a single video. And I have a lot of content headed your way with the launch of Apple's new operating system. So in this video right now, I'm gonna show you everything that Apple has updated and changed with iOS 16 for the home screen and the lock screen on our iPhone. And that includes going through all of the customizations that you can now do to your lock screen and there is a lot to talk about. So without further ado, let's jump in to this video. So here's my iPhone. It's running the first beta here of iOS 16. This right here looks pretty familiar, but if I lock the screen and turn it back on, you'll see the new lock screen experience. Starting off with new topography at the top, we now have widgets on the lock screen and new improved notifications. Notifications now can sit right at the bottom of your screen instead of taking up the entire screen itself. And anytime you can swipe up to pull up on those notifications or you can pull them down and minimize them and hide them at the bottom. So if I go ahead and press on that lock screen, just hold for a moment, I'll end up in this new editing interface, which is really neat. So I can swipe left and right and change my face at any time throughout the day. So I wanna to go to this first one, tap it, boom, I'm in it. Hold again, swipe through, maybe I can go to the new astronomy face. It looks gorgeous. You wanna see this animation because it looks really neat. I'm just gonna swipe open, slow motion, you see the icons come in, the earth spin to the bottom of the screen. It's so cool. It's really cool. They did a great job with that animation. So back here to the lock screen. Um, when we go into the editing interface, aside from just swiping between faces, you can create a new face. You can do it by tapping that blue plus button in the lower right hand corner or swiping all the way to the right hand side where it just gives you a blank template to choose from. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit add new. Along the top, there are several different options for faces that you can immediately choose from. People, photos, photo shuffle, emoji, weather, astronomy, and color. So if we jump into these, say, uh, people, you can go through my people albums, look through all these people in my phone, and I can choose some that way. I can go to photos, it'll actually let me choose any photos that I'd like, can do that as well. Uh, photo shuffle, similar, but I choose multiple photos and it'll change every time I look at my phone. Emoji, you can choose up to six emoji on here, microphone, fire, TV, and it'll just put them all over the screen in different patterns. There's different grid patterns you can swipe between, circles, fun stuff like that. Uh, there is weather, astronomy, and color. So if we look through featured, featured is like a gallery of suggestions that you can use for your face. So there's ones for collections, astronomy, colors, pride, emoji, weather. Some of the ones that are up top, but they're creating them for you. So you have a jumping off point and you don't have to create everything from scratch. Below that are suggested photos of apparently me and my wife and some thumbnails that I created on my phone. Below that, we have those weather and astronomy ones. Some of the ones we already looked at. There's emoji, different collections like pride down here, uh, and then some colored ones. So let's go ahead and find something fun. Uh, I really did like these collections ones. I think this looks awesome. And I love how it like swoops in front of the time. Just really neat little detail there. So I can hap tap on the little three ellipses down there in the lower corner. I can disable depth effects and enable perspective zoom. Both of those are options. If I tap on the plus button in the center, I can add widgets. So by default, Apple has several widgets just like on your home screen, but now you can add them to your lock screen too. They are different widgets, so just because apps have widgets for your home screen does not mean they'll appear on your lock screen. So by default, Apple has batteries, calendar, clock, fitness, home, news, reminders, stocks, and weather. So a few of these I wanna look at. I love the home ones, so there's things for climate, and there's lights and switches, security. Lights and switches is definitely the one that I wanna add, so I can tap on that to add it to my little widget thing there. I can go to clock, which can be different cities, world clock, alarms, things like that, because I already have a time on my lock screen, so you can add any of those. Fitness is always useful, so I can go ahead and tap, add one of those in there. There are news widgets. Some of these have different sizes. Some are only one size, so I can choose symbols for stocks, weather, clock, batteries, always helpful. My watch is dead this morning after installing betas, but boom, I've gone ahead and added my widgets there just to my new lock screen that I've created. 
Anything else you can also adjust, so the font, it's at the color, all that I can change for the clock, so whatever I prefer. A bunch of different colors here to choose from. Color wheel on the far right, I can pick there. Boom, whatever I like, something like that. That's not a great color, but we're sticking with it, guys. Um, but yeah, fonts and colors you can choose from. Same thing for the top there. I can add additional widgets, play around. So these are kind of like complications on an Apple Watch, but on the face of your phone. So choose what you want. You want the uh, date, adding with your fitness information. Perfect, you got it. Uh, when I'm finished, I can hit done, and I've created my new watch face. I can jump into it again, and there is my new watch face, or my new, see I'm already calling it my watch face, my new lock screen on my phone. And again, just to switch faces, all you do is hold down and I can jump between my different lock screens that I've created very easily. Now, if we wanna get even fancier, I can go to any of these faces and tap on that focus button. Focus allows me to link a face to a focus. So maybe I have one face or screen lock screen that I use during work and I have complications pertaining to work, like my calendar, things like that. So I could set that to when I'm working or do not disturb. Or maybe I have one for driving that'll have like maps and other shortcuts like that on my home screen. So, or my lock screen. So you can change these focuses to whatever you want them to tie to. So I really like the astronomy face and it's a great one for going to bed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on my sleep face. So now, if I go to my regular lock screen like this, normal. But if I tap in and hold and I switch to my astronomy face, just like that, sleep has automatically been enabled. So you can do this for any of these faces, tying them to any of the focus modes that you create for working out, for driving, for sleeping, for being at the office, anything like that. And you can customize these faces, these lock screens, and tie them to those focus modes. It's an awesome change to how these lock screens work. If I could just interrupt myself for one moment, I have to thank our sponsor for this video, Jamf. Jamf is the de facto standard in Apple mobile device management, and it's trusted by more than 62,000 businesses, schools, and hospitals. Apple's exceptional hardware is only half of the equation. How you secure, manage, and empower your users with that technology is the other half, and Jamf makes that happen. Jamf has the ability to scale to any business, whether you've got just a handful of iPhones or iPads or tens of thousands of iPhones, iPads, Macs, or Apple TVs, Jamf can be your solution. Jamf is ready to scale to any size business, whether you've got a handful of iPads or you have tens of thousands of iPhones, iPads, Macs, and Apple TVs, Jamf can be the solution. Recently, it introduced app installers, which is an automated way for IT teams to update third-party Mac apps when a new version is released. Jamf automatically sources, packages, and deploys the new versions, ensuring users have the latest features and security patches. On a personal note, I've actually had the opportunity to sit down with several organizations that have rolled out Jamf MDM solutions in their businesses, and they have always spoken extremely highly of Jamf software and credit it with making all of their goals a reality. You can get started today and start your free trial by following the link that is down in the description or by heading to jamf.com. Thank you again very much to Jamf for sponsoring this video. Now let's take a look at some changes coming to the home screen. First, Apple has changed the way that Spotlight works. Previously, you could pull down and Spotlight would appear at the top of your screen. That still works, but now Apple has moved that search bar towards the bottom, so it pops up right above the keyboard. I think that's a little bit more convenient, especially if you have to move in and change words or just type with anything like that. Beyond that, you can also tap on the search button there just above your dock. So if I start scrolling through, it changes to the pagination, but I can also tap it and boom, I'm right into Spotlight Search. So very handy. Apple's also made several improvements to Spotlight across all of its platforms, iOS, iPadOS, and Mac OS. So there's some nice improvements coming to Spotlight, making it more useful than it was before. Now let's go ahead and look at widgets. So first I'm gonna tap on an icon and hit edit home screen, tap on that plus button in the top left-hand corner. 
If we go down, look at maybe news first. So the news widget has been updated. Apple says that the news widget will now have more local news brought into the widget. So Apple was offering local news in certain metro areas, and now that information will populate in the news widget as well as actually in the news app. So if you're in one of those areas, one of those bigger cities, that's very helpful to have inside of the news widget. Going back, Apple says the stock widget will have a new two column view so you can see more tickers at once. Right now I'm not seeing that. It looks like they're all the same ones compared to my iOS 12 device. So that likely is coming in a future beta. If we tap out of that, the notes widget, that has been updated. Apple has brought Quick Note to iOS. It before was on macOS and iPadOS, but it's now come to the iPhone as well. So there is now new a quick note and a large quick note view to create those notes right there from the home screen. Super nice, easy to have with notes. And finally, in sleep, Apple made improvements to sleep data. Well, with iOS 16, there's a new sleep widget that gives you a more detailed view of your sleep history from the previous night. So before you had the data and the schedule, now there's this new specific one that gives you your last night's data in one little widget. So that covers it. That is everything new coming to the lock screen and the home screen as part of iOS 16, including how you can make your own customized lock screens. I'm very excited for this, especially with an iPhone 14 with a supposed always on display. I think those widgets are gonna be amazing. Let me know what you think or if you have any questions over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Otherwise, stay tuned. I got a lot more videos headed your way.